pictures of these two pyramids. You will be surprised to know that these two pictures are of the same pyramid. The first one is the picture of pyramid in ancient time and this one is the present look of the pyramid. Now what caused this pyramid to look like this? The pyramid has experienced a change in the appearance because it has been weathered by natural factors over these years. So now let's learn about this type of weathering. Now look at this rock. See this rock is broken into two pieces. But do you think that this rock was always like this? Obviously not. This rock was once a single piece of a rock. But then due to weathering this rock is broken into two pieces. So this type of weathering where the rock is broken into pieces is called physical weathering. So now let's understand the meaning of physical weathering. Physical weathering refers to the disintegration of rocks without any alteration in the chemical composition of rocks. Another name for physical weathering is mechanical weathering. Now I have already mentioned in my previous video that physical weathering is very similar to physical change where the size, shape and appearance of the rocks changes but there is no alteration or change in the chemical composition of the rocks. So this type of weathering is called physical weathering. Now what is the main factor that causes physical weathering? The main driving force behind physical weathering is difference in temperature or high range of temperature. Now what is meant by range of temperature? Range of temperature means the difference between high and low temperature. That is if the highest temperature is very high and lowest temperature is very low then this difference in temperature causes physical weathering. We will see how this variation in temperature causes physical weathering. So we just learned that the difference in temperature is responsible for physical weathering. Since difference in temperature is the main factor behind physical weathering, therefore physical weathering is common in places that have high fluctuations in temperature. And where do we have high fluctuations in temperature? We have high fluctuations in temperature in arid and semi-arid regions like in deserts. In deserts, the days are hotter and the nights are cooler and due to this reason we have wide fluctuation in temperature and therefore physical weathering is very common in deserts. Apart from desert, physical weathering is also common in polar regions. This is because in polar regions or in higher altitudes, we have wide variation in seasonal temperature. That is the winters are extremely cold and the summers are warmer. And due to this variation in seasonal temperature, physical weathering is common in polar regions. So we just understood the meaning of physical weathering and the characteristics of physical weathering. So now let us learn more about physical weathering. Look at these two pictures. What do you see? We see cracks in roads and in walls. Now these are very common incidences that we often find. But why do you think these cracks have developed on roads or walls? These cracks have developed on these objects because of thermal expansion and contraction. Now what does this mean? The word thermal is related to heat. So thermal expansion means expansion or increase in the volume of substances due to heating. 
while thermal contraction means decrease in the volume of substances when temperature drops. These materials expand when the temperature is high and contract when the temperature falls down. Now, similar to these materials, the rocks present on the earth's surface experience similar kind of expansion and contraction and due to this, we find a kind of weathering in rocks. Now, look at these pictures of rocks. In these two pictures, we can see that the rocks have been broken into blocks. See, the rocks are broken into blocks. Now the rocks experience this kind of weathering due to expansion and contraction. Let's see how. During the day when the temperature is high, the rocks are heated up. And at night when the temperature falls, the rocks cool down. We know materials and rocks expand on heating while they contract on cooling. So at night the rocks contract and during day when the temperature is high, the rocks expand. Now due to continuous expansion and contraction, cracks develop along the surface of the rocks. And due to this repeated process, the rocks are broken down into blocks along the cracks as we can see in this video. So this process of weathering is called block disintegration. So block disintegration is the process in which the rocks are broken down along the joints into blocks. We just saw in the previous video that the rocks are broken down into blocks due to expansion and contraction. Now what is the main factor behind expansion and contraction of rocks? The difference in temperature and as discussed earlier, arid and semi-arid regions like deserts experience high diurnal range of temperature that is high variation in daily temperatures. Now in places like deserts we have high diurnal range of temperature. Now in desert sand is found in abundance and sand gets heated up rapidly during day when the temperature is high. Again at night when the temperature falls down the sand rapidly releases heat and due to this the days are hotter in desert while the nights are cooler and therefore we have wide variation in daily range of temperature. So due to this reason block disintegration is common in deserts. Now let's learn about another type of physical weathering. Now just as we can peel the petals of an onion, the outer surface of the rocks also peel off and this process of weathering is called onion weathering or exfoliation. Let's see what causes the rocks to break down in this manner. Onion weathering also happens due to difference in temperature. What happens is that the outer surface of the rocks expand when the temperature is high and they contract at night when the temperature falls. Now due to this continuous expansion and contraction, concentric cracks develop on the surface of the rocks and as this process continues, the rocks break off along the concentric cracks that is the outer surface surface of the rocks peel off or scale off and the inner surface of the rock gets exposed. So the disintegration of rocks in this manner is called exfoliation. So exfoliation is the process in which the top layers of the rocks peel off due to difference in temperature. Now see here we have a picture of an exfoliated rock. See, this exfoliated rock is dome shaped. Now, exfoliated rocks are dome shaped because the outer surface of the rocks peel off. See, in this rock we can see that the outer surface of the rock is peeled off and the inner surface gets exposed. And this type of rock is found in Kalahari Desert of South Africa. This map shows the location of Kalahari Desert and Kalahari Desert is located in the southern part of Africa. So in this region that is in Kalahari Desert we can find exfoliated dome shaped rocks. Exfoliation and block disintegration is common in rocks of 
homogeneous composition. Now, slate is an example of homogeneous rock. Now, what is the meaning of homogeneous rock? Homogeneous rock means a rock that is composed of one predominant mineral. Now, rocks can also be composed of more than one mineral. Do you know what such rocks are called? The rocks that are composed of more than one mineral are called heterogeneous rocks. An example of heterogeneous rocks is granite. See, this is the picture of granite. In this picture, we can see that granite has a granular texture. And these small grains represent different minerals present in the rocks. So what is the main difference between homogeneous rocks and heterogeneous rocks? Homogeneous rocks are the rocks that is composed of one mineral or same kind of mineral. And heterogeneous rocks are composed of several different minerals. And we just learnt that homogeneous rocks are subjected to block disintegration and exfoliation. So now let's see how heterogeneous rocks or rocks that are composed of different minerals are weathered. Different minerals present in rocks have dissimilar properties. That is, they have differential rates of expansion and contraction. For example, the dark colored rocks like mineral B expand more than the light colored rocks like mineral A. So now look at this video. In this video, we can see that mineral B expands more during daytime when the temperature is high than mineral A. And again at night, mineral B contracts more than mineral A. So due to difference in this rate of contraction and expansion, the rocks break down into grains. So this kind of weathering is known as granular disintegration. So during granular disintegration, the rocks have peated or uneven surface and they break down into small grains due to difference in the rates of expansion and contraction of the minerals present in them. So we just learned that granular disintegration occurs when different minerals present in the rocks expand and contract differently and due to this reason granular disintegration is common in heterogeneous rocks and crystalline rocks and these types of rocks are commonly found in deserts and again in deserts we have wide variation in daily range of temperature so the heterogeneous and crystalline rocks that are found in deserts are subjected to granular disintegration. Now before we move on, let us try to answer this. The process in which heterogeneous rocks are reduced into small grains is called chemical weathering, exfoliation, block disintegration or granular disintegration. Well, the correct answer is granular disintegration because granular disintegration is the process in which the rocks that are composed of different minerals breaks down into small grains. Now look at the picture of these two rocks. It is very evident from the pictures that these rocks are found in coal countries. Again, the rocks have been broken into blocks due to frost. So, in cold countries or in higher altitude, frost plays an important role. So, now let's see how frost breaks down the rocks. To understand how frost acts on rocks, let us perform an activity. Take an empty bottle and fill it up completely up to its brim. Keep the bottle in a refrigerator overnight. Take the bottle after a day, what happens? You find that the shape of the bottle gets distorted. Why does this happen? This happens because water expand on cooling and due to this, the shape of the bottle gets distorted. In high altitudes, during rainfall, water enters into the cracks of the rocks. 
in the night when temperature drops the water turns into ice now the volume of the water increases this causes widening of cracks again during daytime when temperature rises ice melts as a result the water enters deeper into the cracks now due to this repeated freezing and thawing the rocks break off along the cracks this process is known as frost action this is how the rocks disintegrate or break down the rock by the process of repeated freezing and thawing and the rock particles collected at the base of the rock is called a scree in the previous animation we saw that frost plays an important role in frost action and we find frost ice or glaciers in cold countries or in higher altitudes thus frost action is common in cold countries or in higher altitudes now let's have a look at these two pictures in these pictures the horizontal lines at the surface of the rocks represent the scratch marks caused due to weathering by wind in other words when wind loaded with sand particles blow over these rocks they attack and scratch the surface of the rocks and due to this the rocks look like this so now let's see how weathering of rocks is caused by winds when wind loaded with loose sand particles blow over the rocks they attack these rocks and scratch the surface of the rocks now due to continuous attack by winds the soft rock particles also gets eroded so this is how weathering is caused by wind now weathering by wind is common in places where sand is found in abundance and where do we find sand in abundance sand is found in abundance in arid and semi arid regions like in deserts so weathering by wind is common in deserts so these are the different types of physical weathering that we learnt in today's video block disintegration is the weathering of rocks when the rocks are broken down into blocks the next one is exfoliation exfoliation is a type of physical weathering when the outer surface of the rocks peel off now block disintegration and exfoliation occurs in homogeneous rocks in heterogeneous rock granular disintegration occurs granular disintegration is a type of physical weathering when rocks that are composed of different minerals breaks down into small grains block disintegration granular disintegration and exfoliation occurs due to difference in temperature another type of physical weathering is frost action in case of frost action the rocks break down or disintegrate due to repeated freezing and thawing the last one is weathering due to wind action in this case the wind loaded with loose sand particles scratch the surface of the rocks and due to which the rocks are worn out so these are the different types of physical weathering so in today's video we understood the meaning of physical weathering physical weathering refers to the disintegration of rocks without any alteration in the chemical composition of rocks then we also learned that difference in temperature plays a vital role in physical weathering we also learned that physical weathering is mostly common in deserts and in polar regions and finally we learned about different types of physical weathering In our next video we will learn about another type of weathering that is chemical weathering. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now